Okay, you guys have weighed in, and let's talk about what we're going to do about these cards. Welcome to Urban Monk TV. So first I want to thank you guys for weighing in uh, both on my Instagram page, Urban Monk TV, uh, and on YouTube in the comments. Uh, you know, the comments were kind of all over the map. Some were, keep these, some were, buy the uh, ones on eBay, the rails, the unions, the aluminum ones that the guy is selling there. That was the $55 option if you recall from my previous video. And, uh, you know, I've read all of these comments. I've tried to respond to every one of them. And again, thank you guys for weighing in. It makes it feel like a community here. Um, and what I've done is come and I've inspected these, this bank of cards that I have and weighed that with your feedback and weighed that against my experience with this bike. Um, the one thing I will say is that I was riding this bike, sorry, I don't want this to go to sleep on me. I was riding this bike for almost two years before I took it apart. Um, so it was running pretty well, other than we did have a lean condition developing in number four, and we burnt the hole in the top of the piston on that extremely hot day when I did the Los Angeles uh, Distinguished Gentleman's Ride. Uh, that was the 2017, no, sorry, that was the 2016 uh, DGR. So, first, my experience with these cars. I was riding the bike. I was putting fuel through it all the time. And when it broke down, I didn't just roll the bike off behind the barn and let it set. Uh, I started taking it apart right away. And so I got the fuel that was in these bowls out of there for the most part and as you saw in the previous video I've got one of these apart already uh, it is the number four and it's super clean inside so that's one factor that I'm weighing pretty darn clean to begin with the other thing I've done is I've just felt the rubber on these unions and you can kind of squeeze it and feel it moving and even up here on the uh, top of the choke I can feel the tacky and stickiness to this little rubber cap that goes over here on all four of these they're real pliable they're um, they're soft you know they're not hard and brittle and cracked so for the most part my rubber here is in good shape and I can expect that these are in good shape um, because they weren't leaking before and they're pliable. The other thing of course is the inside of the bowl. So I've got three more I have to open up. I'm going to do that shortly. And then everything else. Outside of the cards, things are grimy, dusty, but there's nothing here. Uh, there isn't a lot of rust. Um, not a lot, there isn't really any rust other than the actual little thumb lever for the choke. And I kind of like it, it's a little patina. I'm gonna leave it. Um, the rest of this should clean up pretty well on the outside with even the most simple of degreasers. The only thing is not taking it apart does present a challenge um, with cleaning the inside and making sure we got every jet and every orifice and passageway clean. Um, we can spray card cleaner, but we have to be careful that we don't get it on rubber parts, because again, I just talked about how uh, pliable and soft the rubber is. If I get card cleaner on it, well, then you know, we're gonna degrade that plastic, or sorry, that rubber pretty quickly. The other thing is a really good comment from Moto5 on uh, YouTube. Thank you for commenting. Um, he had a really good point. Moto Fob's point 
uh, that I thought was good was first, I would leave it untouched wherever possible, especially a fuel rail, because repairing one thing typically leads to a breakdown of another. You know, it's been my experience that that is true pretty often. Over on Instagram, I got a comment from Blood and Ashes, thank you for commenting, and she mentioned that she has ordered that Union and the Tea on eBay uh, and was still waiting on delivery of them. So I don't have feedback on those yet. Um, my guess is that you know they're a pretty simple part and if the guy that machined them uh, has, you know, unless he's just completely off his rocker, it's probably not that difficult to uh, machine them, put the right size O-ring on there. That's really where the critical thing is going to be. The diameter of the O-ring and the depth of the groove that he machines into those tubes uh, and how much uh, of you know, an expansion of the O-ring those allow, because um, that's where the seal is. It's pretty much on the top and bottom each side of that O-ring, if that makes sense. So my guess is that's probably a good solution, but Motofob's words are um, kind of rolling around in my head and thinking, you know, why, why invite trouble? And the bike was running pretty darn good, so I just needed a tuning here, really. And in another comment, thank you to DW, I assume you're not Drum Workshop, for you drummers out there, you'll get that. Um, it says, look into using pine salt to clean the carbs. Doesn't harm plastic, rubber, and rinses off more easily than carb cleaner or dip. He says he hasn't used it himself, but uh, he wants to give it a try when it comes to cleaning the carbs. I have used pine salt in the past, and with success on a 1981 Honda CB900 that I restored a while back. I think you can see some pictures of that in my little intro sequence. Um, what a great bike, but that had a bank of four uh, constant velocity carbs that are real common on Hondas of the early 80s and uh, I think 1979 they were using them a lot too. Uh, EPA brought those carbs into being and um, they also brought in that stupid speedometer that stopped at 80 miles or 85 miles per hour it was like the max speed they thought that was going to conserve fuel if you just psychologically tell people to go slower we all know how that ended anyway so um those carbs uh, i left as an entire bank that has a what you call an air valve and there's a rubber diaphragm in that thing and um the rubber in there if you use carb cleaner or carb dip or anything like that to destroy that rubber. And so on that particular bank of carbs, I did use the Pine Sol Soak, and it worked. That bike was running fantastic when I was done with it. Uh, in fact, I took it on some long trips and, and just had a blast with it. So um, the Pine Sol route has already gotten uh, the thumbs up for me in the past, and uh, I think that's what I've decided to do, you guys. I'm going to leave these still pliable and soft rubber tea and unions uh, and all the other rubber parts here. And I'm just going to take the bowls and the jets and all of that off on the top covers, um, polish those up, and we're going to clean this thing together. I know that doesn't make for very interesting YouTube video work, and when you're doing a project like I am here where it's really two projects, it's building a bike and building a YouTube series. Um, the best thing for the series would be to take this thing apart, and um, I, I just have to make one of those judgment calls about what is most important here. Um, ultimately, I think it's going to be, well, I want a bike that's just running well, and I don't want to cause a bunch of problems for myself. Uh, don't fix it if it isn't broken, right? Um, the other thing too is that this judgment call, I think that's a useful thing for the channel. Um, all of you guys are going to be in situations where you got to make a call like that. Am I taking it completely apart or is that not necessary? So this is one exercise in how I made this decision. 
So as I take these parts off for polishing and cleaning, I'm just going to mark them. This is number four. And then I'm going to keep things organized. This cap has a four written on the other side of it that I can see. And that's a four. Not that it really matters that much with the covers, frankly. Cover's a cover. And a bowl should be a bowl, but uh, they, they were sealed before. So let's get these other three off and see what it looks like in here. And yes, it is a JIS screwdriver. Really should take the time to get one of these, you guys. They're, I think this was $12 on eBay, and it took like a week to arrive. What number am I working on here? Three. Number three. This particular JIS screwdriver came with um, three different bits that I can put in here. So I've got all sorts of different JIS sizes. So I thought it was a good value and it is fitting these screws fantastic. Pretty clean. Oh, well, look at that. It already says number three in it. See that three right there? How come I didn't see that with the four? Do you guys see a four there? I mean, other than the one I wrote. Interesting. This is number two. But that sure looks like a one to me. Let's see what we get in here. By the way, here's my O-ring kit for this whole carb set. I don't know that I'll use all of those. One thing I'm noticing is that whoever was into these carbs before me seems like they knew what they were doing because they really did not over torque these. Yeah. <laughs> Although, that's a number two on the number one carb. So obviously they weren't watching all the details. As you can see, they look really good inside. These pins are really loose in here. At least they should be. Yeah, things look really nice here. There's the needle valve. And so you wanna look in here at the condition of the seat for that needle valve. This one looks really good. If those are dirty or have uh, you know some varnished fuel in there, what I do is take a Q-tip and some simple toothpaste or maybe baking soda and water and just polish those. And on these, what you're looking for, you can see the little you know, polished area where it meets the seat, but you just want to make sure that it isn't indented there, uh, because then it's worn. 
Ultimately, what really matters is you fill this thing up with fuel, and if they don't seal, it'll leak out of the drain tubes um, because the bowls will overfill. But at this point, you can inspect them and make up your mind whether or not you're ordering new ones or not. I am not ordering new ones because they all look pretty much like this. Okay, so I'm going to first take these jets out of each one. Uh, I've noted that uh, we've got 50s here and what's the secondary. And I cannot see the primary. I think they're 80s. I need to get it out first. But uh, the JIS screwdriver, the flap that comes with that is the perfect size for these secondaries. I check each of these as I pull it out because just because I looked at one and it said that it's a size 50, don't assume they're all 50s. You don't know what somebody did to your bike before. All right, I do not have a very large JIS for these, but this will work. That's a 80. Pretty sure that says 80 again. Okay, so I want to go and check uh, the service manual and see what is the stock size. I believe that the stock size is the 80 on the main and uh, 50 on the primary, but we're going to find out. Could be wrong. And uh, then because I'm going to run pod filters, I'm going to go ahead and order up some other sizes. And I'm going to go a little larger to try to um, run a bit richer uh, mix because I'll be getting more air. So I'm going to need to get more fuel and uh, in theory anyway. So I'll probably go up maybe two steps on the mains and one on the secondaries and see how that works. And then, and then maybe buy one plus or minus, you know, one in between there on the mains and another one above that two steps. Um, I don't think they cost too much money. Everything looks nice and clean here. So with these, what I'm looking for is that those holes are completely clear. I'm going to go ahead and take the O-ring off of this thing, replace it with a new one, but I will be um, running a guitar string. Uh, it's nice to keep a little piece of high E guitar string around uh, for these little holes. I think I might have some in my toolbox, otherwise I'll go grab it off my daughter's guitar. As I take out the float needle seats, um, being sure to use a six-sided socket rather than a 12-point, um, just because these brass fittings, all of this is a little bit fragile. Um, I mentioned before, whoever put this together in the past was not overly, uh, didn't torque things too intensely, which is nice. So uh, probably not necessary in my case, but if yours are stuck, don't go cranking on them with a 12 point. These are easy. And don't lose this little washer here because uh, they don't come with most of the carb kits that I see. And then for these air screws, these are like idle air screw. Um, I'm just curious, I want to see how many turns out they are and make a note of it. Not that I'm going to follow what the previous person did, but again, the bike ran pretty good. But I just want to know what I have here 
And then I also want to compare to what the service manual says, which I need to open that up here. But. So that's one half, and it's starting to see. Wait, no, it's just a little gummed up. One, one and a half. That's starting to seat now. I don't want to go, well, no, that's two. Two and a half. It's a little touchy because they get gummed up and I've, I'm feeling resistance and what you don't want to do is crank the thing in. So it was two and a half on number four. I'm going to write that down. And like the float needles, we want these to be you know, just an even taper and smooth. I'll actually clean these up a little bit with uh, well, maybe aluminum foil or something. You know, not, not something aggressive like an emery cloth, but something soft. Maybe even just cardboard like a matchbook. Scotch Bright, maybe, although that can remove material too. Two and a half turns, number four. Write it down. Well, I had one that was more like two and three quarters. Maybe I misjudged it. Two and a half looks like the ballpark for sure. Just one more thing. The springs for the air screws. Don't forget those. That's number four. I already got number two out. You don't have a nice cheap set of these picks. Get them, they're handy and cheap. As I was pulling this off, I noticed that See how that slides? I have a hard time believing that that isn't going to leak. There's so much play in that. Hey, leave a comment you guys. Let me know if you've been into this before and saw that yours was loose but it didn't leak. Let me know. Curious about that. This guy is the vacuum for the petcock, the fuel petcock valve, and then these two vacuum lines, I have to figure out what those go to. I don't recall off the top of my head. Anyways, pulling these off. Well, for now, that's as much disassembly as I need to do. I'm going to dip this whole thing into pine saw, so I need to get a container that is, uh, well, wide enough and deep enough for this. And then also, um, they sell big jugs of Pine Sol at like your Sam's Club and uh, what's the other place? Costco. I got a Costco membership, so I'll go there. And here's what we've decided to do. hours and uh, for the rain to stop yes I said rain in Southern California uh, but no rain today and we got a clear coat so we're gonna get this done three coats bottom flip it over then the top
a little extra dry time because of the cool weather. Okay, so regarding future tuning of these cards, um, main jets, these little guys, him. Stock setting is 80, you know, number 80. Uh, these are Makuni VM22s, if you didn't already know that, on your GS550. And uh, when you get out on eBay, you'll find sellers that list VM22 with all sorts of different jet sizes. And by sizes, I mean the length of the jet, the threads, everything. There's a lot of wrong ones for these cars uh, listed as VM22s. It says VM11 slash 22. Um, so be careful when you're ordering, get the right dimensions. These are nine millimeters long and eight millimeters wide at the head. The thread is five millimeters. Um, you know, just do your measurements and make sure you're ordering the right thing. I've been doing a lot of research around jet sizes and because I am going with the stock headers, but um, a little bit, what I assume is a little bit more free-flowing exhaust, uh, just from looking at this thing, uh, I think I'm going to get more air through this engine because of this and... Well, let me just talk about that. So the advice I'm getting is that a person should go up two jet sizes. This is all a starting point, by the way. You're going to have to play around. So you got to buy some jets you're probably not going to use. Uh, but you need various sizes. Uh, I bought two jet sizes up for that. And for these individual pod filters that I intend to put on, I went up another two, maybe three, for that, plus or minus one. So 80 is the standard jet size, there's 82 and a half, there's 85, there's 87.5 or 88, some people are listing them differently. There's 90, 92.5, 95, that kind of thing. So I've gone down as low as the 85s and all the way up every single step of the way up into the 100s. Like I think I go as high as like 125 because I just bought a 10 piece kit times four carbs. Um, so I've got a lot of different sizes coming. The other thing that will matter there uh, is altitude and I'm pretty close to sea level here near Los Angeles and Orange County so um, not going to do much adjustment for that, but if you were, say, in Denver, I'd probably subtract or decrease by one whole size. The other thing is the um, pilot jets, the, the smaller ones. Where are they? These little guys. I'm hearing from my reading, which doesn't make any sense, um, that you can maybe get by with stock or bump that up one size. Right now I'm gonna go with stock because I can order those in pretty fast from Jets R Us and uh, they'll be here in a couple days if I need them. So just trying to limit the spend here a little bit because I also ordered a color tune uh, in the 14 millimeter size that'll fit in these spark plug holes on this head. So that's how I'm going about tuning. That's future plans. Uh, I should have what I need. The other thing we're gonna have to do is probably adjust the height of the needles in here. And there's a, a circlip or an uh, E-clip sometimes they're called, uh, and notches. And we can raise that up by lowering the clip. And that'll allow more fuel in because we are allowing more air in. Why are we doing all of this? Because if we allow more air in, but not more fuel, then we're gonna run lean and lean is gonna run hot. I'll be back rebuilding this engine before you know it. Don't wanna do that.
Okay, so one final thing I'm gonna do with this, because Pine Sol is water-based and there are uh, steel components here, uh, most is brass, most is aluminum, that water basin is gonna hurt that. It's certainly not gonna hurt plastic and uh, rubber, but um, we don't want to start rusting the steel pieces and uh, there's a lot of springs here and that type of thing. So WD-40 and brake cleaner um, and then I'm going to use carb cleaner in some very controlled areas uh, where I know I'm not going to get it on any of the rubber or plastic components. But the WD-40 will get all the water off. And in case you didn't know, WD stands for Water Displacement Trivia. Hey guys, thanks for watching. This is going to have to be a wrap for this weekend. Uh, I've got a busy Sunday here and then I'm traveling for work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, so you probably aren't going to see this video until later in the week. I apologize for that, but uh, made some progress here. We're getting these carbs cleaned up. We have a plan for how we're going to do this and how we're going to tune. Uh, and then we got clear coat on the frame, so the frame is pretty much done and just waiting for assembly at this point. Uh, we got to drill some mounting holes and that kind of thing for the electronics, but uh, that'll come. And then uh, the seat is now in the hands of uh, Rodney at Allison Sales and Canvas, and he is going to do the upholstery work. So stay tuned for an update on that. If you like what I'm doing, give me a thumbs up, subscribe for updates, and thanks for watching.